Hi there folks, my name is NovaWing24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your one-stop location for your simulation release news and goings on from the week that was. So here we are for a rather late edition of the Nova Wrap for Sunday the 29th of April 2018 and we're going to jump straight into it. We're going, okay, this isn't a release, this isn't a release, this is actually uh, a discontinuation news, so um, for, for those who, uh, I'm kind of, I can't believe that you would have missed it, but uh, but just in case you have, uh, the uh, Dovetail Games has decided to, has uh, announced rather suddenly uh, on Monday that they are curtailing uh, development of Flight Sim World. Uh, it will, they were announcing that they will be um, uh, cancelling the title, cancelling the project, and they will not be uh, producing it any further, which is... Whether you like the title or not, uh, to watch, uh, to, to see a sim die is actually a very bad news for everybody. We, we all lose, uh, is the fundamentals of this. Um, rightly or wrongly, whether you, whether you like, uh, whether you liked Flight Sim World, we enjoyed it, whether you saw a long-term goal in it or not, um, the fact is, is that more happened in the simula the flight simulation community once they came on the market, uh, than, and with all the other platforms than we'd seen in, I'm pretty sure, the last five years. So, not going to make any further comments about that anywhere on here on the new show. Um, if you do want the my opinion piece uh, as part of that with my fellow with um, some three with two other grumpy simmers, uh, please tune in to the three grumpy simmers episode that was aired during the week. Uh, that will be I'll put that in the link in the description down below. Uh, for those who are interested, if you did, did still want to pick up Flight Sim World, because although it will be being, being discontinued, it will be continuing. It will be still available for those who have purchased it. If you do still want to purchase it, it is it is currently um, the current current announcement from Doctor Games is that it will be remaining on sale uh, until the 24th of May, so you have just a little bit under a month if you do want to um, uh, pick it up and, and, uh, and add it to your collection for posterity. If you do want to do that, you can, um, or otherwise you can continue ignoring it, or, other, or, or, or for those who may have been wondering, if you do have a copy of it already, it's okay, you can still install it, continue installing it and uh, flying in it. As I said, it will just be, um, just if just new users will not be able to access it after the 24th of May at this stage. Who knows? Maybe it will go on. Maybe they'll change their mind. Maybe they will go a different direction in the future. We don't know. But as I said, I just wanted to get that one out of the way because as I said, it's, whether you enjoyed it or not, whether you liked the title or not, whether you um, agree with any of the positions or not, it's actually neither here, here nor there. The fact is, we all lost this week. But anyway, moving on. All right. So moving on to the product release news for this week, and we're going to start to get started with the ESP-based platforms, and we're going to start with the uh, Russian developer Just Sim. Excuse me. Who've released their rendition of uh, Moscow Venuko, uh, Venuk, Venuk, bleh, uh, uh, Venukovo Airport, International Airport for Prepared V4. So um, they're releasing this one um, exclusively for Prepared V4, um, which is the second, I believe, the second release that Justin have come out now, which is now exclusively for Prepared V4, um, which is. Uh, again, uh, I have I've made made myself my views and opinions known on this. Um, is I have mixed feelings on it, but. And that's where they're going with this one. Uh, now, this one's uh, coming in. Now, this is a rendition of this uh, international airport. So, it's a, a dual runway international airport, um, just about uh, 30 kilometers south of uh, Moscow. Um, it's one of the four major airports that actually serve Moscow. So, for those who fly in and out of Russia on a regular basis, um, this will probably, airport will probably be well known to you. Now, interesting enough, um, this one's come through as a fairly... Uh, we've seen some fairly detailed releases from the guys over at um, Just Sim. We sort of they were a mixed bag sometimes, uh, and I've so they, they come with generally very good quality um, uh, textures for their modeling, modeling uh, very good quality modeling for their buildings as well. The airport layout is current as it was at the end of 2017, so still fairly updated. Uh, full uh, implementation and compatibility with FTX Global as well. And the Open LC, sorry, as well. Uh, full updated of the dynamic lighting shadowing system as for prepared V4, as well as updated with the uh, modeling techniques for V4, which is always good to see. As I said, standard stuff to say, fully updated AFCAD with uh, AI traffic and airline uh, designations of the areas as well. Um, customized customized night, night effects, um, optimized for uh, good performance as well. 3D birds, grass, all the things that we expect to see in high quality um, sceneries these days as well. Uh, it does also have... Uh, 
automatic season, seasonal variations um, of the vegetation and the background photo reel as well, uh, which is always something that's cool to see implemented. It's becoming a lot more common now, but it's sort of about even even a year ago it wasn't even that common. Um, however, it does have once again the big sticking point that I have always with all of JustSim releases, uh, with the fact that their compatibility um, they they advertise that they're using a visual doc docking guidance system and animated jetways that are reliant on SODE compatibility. Um, and once again, and I think this has been every release for the last 12 months, it says that feature is coming in the next few weeks. Very frustrating, I feel, that they are literally releasing an incomplete product where they're acknowledging it's an incomplete product. And I honestly, I, I, I put the question out to you guys that does, does, does JustSim ever actually implement these um, SODE um, and GSX compatibilities that they say they're going to release in two to three weeks. And yeah, I go back through the back catalog uh, in uh, in Sim Market, going, it's still there in the description that they're adding it in two to three weeks. So it, it does concern me that they are literally just releasing and saying they're going to do it and then never actually doing it. So I'd actually love to hear from any viewers who actually do have their products and see if they have um, actually done the update as promised in the future. Let me know. Uh, otherwise, though, if you are wanting to pick this one up, uh, you are looking at picking this one up. Uh, available at, uh, currently only at Sim Market, coming in at around about twenty-seven US dollars, twenty-one euros, uh, or your regional equivalent available now. All right, in a, another prepared V4. Well, interesting release this one. So the guys over at Simwings um, have released um, their uh, a version, their prepared V4 version of uh, Malaga, uh, which is a uh, very busy airport in uh, in Spain. Um, of course, a lot of this is it's kind of funny enough coming into summer holidays. A lot of uh, airport developers sort of uh, release or reboot many of their uh, titles that uh, are typical summer destinations for people to travel to. Um, and so you can fly there virtually before the actual season changes. But uh, this is interesting as Simwings are coming out, have rebooted the one for their, with their professional label, which under the Aerosoft sort of structure means that it's a prepared V4 title only. Now, here's the interesting part about this and where I'm a little confused and honestly a little concerned. So, not only, so the original release was Malaga X, which is available for uh, FSX and prepared v, uh, V3. Cool, no way. So it's pretty stock standard format we've seen from Aerosoft lately where they'll do the professional version, which the, where they do, yep, cool, no way. The new version is updates, um, you know, various features, but essentially brings the compatibility with prepared v4. Cool, no worries. You either buy it new if you didn't have it before, or if you already had the previous FSX version, then you pay a small fee and you get an upgrade, usually around about sort of like seven euros. And this one is no exception. What's interesting and quite frankly concerning here is the fact that at the same time, the original Malaga X has also been updated to work, work with prepared V4. So just think about that for a second here. The original release product where is now compatible with FSX, um, FSX, FSX Steam Edition and prepared version version you know, three and four. And then at the same time, they've also released the professional edition, which is prepared V4 exclusive. And yet the only change reading through the, the, the list of uh, updates and features, the only change, that the only difference between the two I can see is the fact that it supports dynamic lighting at night. That's it. It still supports prepared V4 out of the box and it still does follow the correct installer. So I'm sort of wondering here, literally, is this just a money grab? Because if you're a, you know, if you've gone the straight normal read of the Aerosoft and the, the standard Aerosoft process, which is if you're a prepared V4 user, you've got to wait till the professional version comes out, you pay your upgrade fee and off you go. Cool, no worries. But in this case, they're saying, yes, pay your upgrade fee to get your professional version, but you don't have to to get it into prepared v4 it's fully compatible with prepared v4 just download the updated installer that's it so that is a real serious concern for me that i feel that somebody is screwing the community here just throwing it out there so i'd love to know more about this as i said and for those who are interested uh, if you are a um, 
a new user, uh, you can actually still pick up. You can still pick up Malaga X as well. So yeah, there's still supply. You can still purchase it if you haven't purchased it already. And that's coming in at uh, 21 euros, uh, which is about 25, 26 US dollars. So pretty stock standard. Now the prepared V4 only professional edition is coming in at 24 euros. And so we're looking at 30, you know, 29, 29 US dollars. So we're talking, you know. A, a, you know, four or five dollars difference, not a huge amount, but it's essentially the ex it is the exact same product except with slightly better night lighting. So I really question here what's going on here, and why would you buy the professional edition when I can buy that? And if I want to still use Prepared V3 and my update into Prepared V4 later on, I can pre uh, buy the previous edition because you haven't updated the AFCAD file, you haven't updated the buildings, you haven't updated the textures, you haven't done anything that. Is fundamentally means that the airport, which normally is the hallmark of the professional series, where they update the AFCAD, they update it to the, the latest scenery design, blah, 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 whatever. So yeah, really concerning here, a, a concerning move on the behalf of um, on Simwings here and Aerosoft. So, hmm. Anyway, I shall leave it to you guys to decide. If you wanted to pick this one, as I said, um, for brand new prices, and other prices, as I said, uh, if you are a Malaga X user and you are up wanting to upgrade to the professional version, uh, it is available, for, as I said, through the standard um, upgrade service. Um, so looking at, if you do it through the Aerosoft website, um, you're looking at coming in uh, at around about 10 US dollars for the standard upgrades, pretty standard price uh, for the uh, upgrade to professional edition. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, just, just maybe just re download the installer. That's an idea. Anyway, moving on. In other releases for the scenery releases for the ESP platforms, uh, the, um, so uh, Giovetsky Design um, has released updates to their uh, to their Seattle City X and Seattle uh, Airports X. Now, uh, we brought these. I brought these products to you uh, sort of a few months ago uh, in the so back in December when they were first released. Now, the Seattle Airports X, when it was first released, was actually always going to be released as a uh, sort of a two-part release. It was initially offered at a lower, at a fairly low cost, uh, because it includes major Seattle airports um, in the area, but it did not include the main one, which is uh, KSEA or Seattle Tacoma. Now that was always acknowledged, saying yes, no, it will come in an update, and it would they in and to the Geovesky Designs credit, they said from the start it would be a paid update. So the paid update has finally arrived. Uh, now, if you are so for uh, for users of that, you are looking at uh, at about a fifteen dollar uh, update, that's fifteen dollar upgrade cost uh, to upgrade your existing uh, title through just log into your uh, retailer that you purchased it through, and you can arrange to get you know, they'll then give you instructions on how to update. In terms of the other, th so essentially what it does do in this one is the, the, the long and the short of it of what it updates is, as I said, it adds in Seattle Tacoma, it adds in new passenger terminals to KPAE along, and new static aircraft as well, so Payne Field or Boeing Field, uh, and it adds in new static aircraft um, to KRNT as well, uh, which is Renton Municipal Airport. and. Um, so yeah, it, it adds in extra stuff, gives you a few more details, adds depends a bit of the coverage, and but mainly, as I said, it gives you a really beautiful high-resolution version, but very light, as all, all Giovetsky Des design products are, very light on your frames, light on your system, rendition of Seattle Tacoma. Now, for those who um, might still in use and enjoy um, the guys over... Um, the previous rendition of Taxi to Gates version of that, which is very resource heavy. Uh, you can still use that and it is still actually fully compatible with Taxi to Gates version. Um, it simply will allow Taxi to Gate version to be displayed and not the uh, GFXC design one. So there you go, that's all good. Uh, the only thing I have about the C release of Seattle Airports X is that there's no discussion because it does also include some bug fixes. And this is one of the, again, a little it might just be in the wording, I don't have this product, so I can't sort of give you any exact details here, but just from looking at it, it does concern me a little bit because does that mean that original purchases of Seattle Airports X, unless they pay the extra, won't receive the bug fixes? Uh, and that's something that actually does sort of concern me about this sort of two-tiered release system that uh, Giovesky Design has gone with this. 
Um, it, it does concern me a little bit. I, I almost think that would have been better off. He would have been better off actually just releasing um, uh, SeaTac as a separate add-on. Uh, to be honest, I just think they, so. Just that, that that does concern me a little bit. But anyway, uh, at the moment, as I said, he's only available for the uh, ESP platforms uh, as FSX and prepared. Um, the surrender, the update of Seattle City X um, includes some bug fixes, updates, uh, including updates of the two airports that it includes, which is um, S55 and S60, uh, along with updated buildings, texture designs, and they get bug fixes. Uh, that is free. So the the, the uh, Seattle City X update to 1.1 1 .1, uh, is completely free. Just log in to your uh, account account to where you purchase it from to arrange for your update. So yes, if you are wanting to pick this one up, these ones available now from your favorite flight sim retailer, uh, coming in at around about 30 US dollars for Seattle City X uh, and coming in uh, around about 50, uh, 45 US dollars uh, for Seattle airports, which when you think about it, for the number of airports you get in there is actually a pretty good, you know, you get five airports in there, 45 bucks. Nine bucks a pop. That's actually not bad with all the stuff, other stuff you get with it. Just saying. Pretty cool. There you go. Anyway, if you want to pick that one up, pick it up from your flight, flight sim retail available for ESP platforms available now. Continuing on with other scenery releases, and this is the one that I'm sure many of you know about. Again, is this the this is the release from Orbix of the Netherlands Netherlands True Earth scenery. So True Earth is a interesting product from Orbex and I've been doing a lot of reading on this and I'm, I'll be honest I, I was a little I was very skeptical of it to start with and I'm still I actually if I'm truthfully honest I'm still a little skeptical of it but um, it does intrigue me quite interestingly so one of the things that we know about, especially X-Plane users will know, uh, that the fact that uh, the X-Plane users will know that um, your photo real scenery uh, and those who might use Mega Scenery Earth, for example, for the ESP platforms, that photo real scenery, it can be extraordinarily large. You can include a lot of stuff, um, and also, but it also tends to be a little flat unless you get sort of very custom ground uh, sort of uh, hand plays, auto gen and stuff like that. This originally, when it was originally sort of publicised, Netherlands True Earth from Orbex was going to be essentially, it sounded initially that it was going to be a foray of them into photoreal scenery. And it is, but with a difference. So instead of actually being a photoreal of just the entirety of the Netherlands, um, so basically essentially one season, what they actually do is they're using some very sophisticated algorithm things as well. They've taken a whole heap of photo reel but then sort of merged it with the sort of land class terrain class kind of features of the ESP engine to actually break make this hybrid where you get the detail the the photo reel detail and quality of a photo reel terrain um, but you get it with a seasonal variation as well, uh, and you get it with a lot more compatibility, including being able to do it with things like um, it, with a lot more autogen compatibility and be able to do custom autogen and stuff like that. So it's a very interesting sort of merging of technologies and ways of actually simulating stuff. Very, very interesting. There's a lot of, there seems to be a lot of tech behind it, and it uh, also leverages off uh, the uh, city scene technology that we saw coming out with uh, the Cityscape Gold Coast as well, um, as well as a lot of the uh, global uh, sort of of, um, uh, positioning data, a lot of, position data, a lot of the sort of uh, land class data that we saw, uh, and the actual sort of rendition technology that we saw in other regions as well, uh, as well as advanced night lighting coming through uh, from Orbix Global and LC that we've seen through that, as well as um, new autogen techniques that we saw through release through Innsbruck, Berlin, and Munich. So it's a real coming together of a lot of different emergent technologies for Orbix, and I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm sort of interested to say, I'm pretty sure that this is very much a, a gamble for them as well. Now, there's a huge amount of features that come in here as well. Now, not only do you get, as I said, you get 85,000 uh, square kilometers of photoreal terrain, so the entire of Netherlands as well, um, in very high detail. As I said, now, this is not necessarily 100% photoreal to the actual parts of Netherlands, but it is photoreal with that kind of land class. So as I said, it's a very interesting combination. Again, full updated of the land class as well, including um, the land class data, including uh, roads, waterways, bridges, transmission lines, uh, power trip, power lines as well, are included, all included. Uh, custom autogen for the entire country has been included, along with a phenomenal amount of uh, cost, custom landmarks, points of interest, uh, windmills, churches, cathedrals, uh, TV antennas, TV towers, all custom modeled or uh, modeled for the 
for the style of building and actually custom and hand place as well. Um, wind tower bones, it's just an insane amount of stuff has gone to this. So fully compatible 3D lighting in here. Five uh, five seasons, five season variations have been put in as well. Um, and you also get as well as a as a bonus, as if all that wasn't enough, you get a bonus of 43 updated airports, including 18 that aren't in the default nav data for the ESP platform, which as we know that as a pretty much the prepared database never got updated from FSX either. So um, really interesting that it's gone through and added those as well. Now, what's the sort of catch of this one? So coming in at price, it's coming at 60 bucks, which considering what you get for it is a is very very reasonable price. So pretty much coming in at one of the normal regional regions, a little bit more expensive than their regional prices, but a lot more details included with this. Now, here's a couple of things that come with this one. This one is in disgustingly huge. This thing is a 77 gig download, 7, yeah, 77 gigabyte download, uh, followed by an unpacks to being, I believe, 150 gigabyte, 150, 160 gigabyte. I'm seeing of stuff. So you're really gonna want like a big hard drive for this one. Um, so SSD users, you might want, yeah, this is gonna be a bit of a, this is gonna move my push the uh, edges of your capacity here. I think suddenly there'll be a lot of people buying bigger hard drives in the next couple of weeks. Anyway, you also get um, an ultra high definition mesh for the country as well at five meter resolution as well. Full compatibility with the, the Globe Ring, uh, uh, Orbix Global, uh, Europe, all the rest of it as well. Now, here's the other thing as well is that it is currently only available for prepared V4. Now, um, it, they have stated and confirmed that it will come, be coming out and be fully supported across FSX, FSX Steam Edition, prepared version 1, 2, and 3. Um, with no additional cost, no additional license fees. It's also, even if you don't own V4, you can purchase it now, but you will not be able to install it yet. You will have to wait until it is available for your SIM platform. Now, again, mixed feelings about this. I'm happy that they are supporting the other platforms. I really am, especially as a, a user of V3 myself. Um, so I'm very appreciative that they are supporting the other platforms. It would have been nice if they'd waited until the other platforms were online as well. Um, but as I said, just be wary of the size of the install and the size of the data. But I'll let the vision uh, that you're watching decide whether you want to grab it or not. But it looks absolutely outstanding. Um, but yeah, just bear that large download the size in uh, in mind as well when you're downloading and installing it. So mm, there you go. If you want to pick this one up, this one is available direct from the orbisdirect.com website coming in at 55 uh, Australian dollars. Um, so that uh, translates to roughly for about 45 US dollars for that one. So it's available now from Orbix. And to another release for the SV World, moving out of scenery and moving into the aircraft releases. So the guys over at Carinado have released their rendition of the Saab 340. Um, so this one's been uh, sort of missing from a high quality rendition uh, from uh, ESP's uh, platform Skies for a very long time. And comes out with uh, and uh, being uh, released now from the guys over at uh, Carinado. Uh, looking quite impressive. Um, pretty good feedback I'm hearing from uh, users that did grab it earlier on as well. Uh, now this one, as we come to uh, particularly expect from uh, Carinado, we've seen a very high quality uh, HD textures, 49, uh, 40, uh, 4K textures throughout. Uh, a full custom sound set um, modeled off the uh, recorded off an actual Saab 340, including all the engines as well as cockpit sounds as well. Uh, very much a, a tested and is a very realistic. Uh, Night, night and in cockpit lighting uh, for the aircraft as well. Uh, full, very highly accurate 3D model of the aircraft as well. Uh, includes full renditions um, of the uh, cockpit and the cockpit um, uh, instrumentation, uh, but it is also fully compatible with the Flight One GTN 750 integration um, if you have that as well as well. Uh, it does include uh, Eric uh, Cycle 1310 um, for in your navigation database, uh, but it is fully compatible with a Navigraph subscription if you do have it as well. Uh, nine high definition deliveries, one HD delivery, a full blank, blank one for everybody else uh, to uh, for if you want to do your skin creating. Uh, full cold, cold and dark starting options as well. Full dynamic propeller the textures, texturing, and a uh, customized uh, takeoff and a fully customized and proven tested by real pilots takeoff and landing movement effect run takeoff run and landing roll movement effects so uh, a lot of stuff gone into this one again fairly is uh, what we've come to expect from a very high quality release from Carinado now this one's coming out for FSX and prepared in all their various formats uh, available now from their website or from your favorite flight sim retailer coming in at 45 US dollars or your original equivalent available now 
Alrighty, and moving out of the ESP world and moving into the X-Plane world, we saw the release this week of uh, from Runway 26 Simulations. Uh, we saw their re release of their rendition of uh, uh, the Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, so this is um, a little bit uh, 19 kilometers, but it's just close to uh, the uh, capital of uh, Jamaica, New Kingston. Uh, it's a very highly detailed rendition of this airport, uh, including uh, high resolution custom, uh, high, res high resolution textures for the airport uh, buildings and the uh, airport ground textures as well. Uh, fully uh, updated uh, high definition 3D models and update of the layout of the airport as it appears as the end of 2017. Includes static AI, autogate jetways, ATC ground routes as well to actually give you sort of the, uh, the uh, well-known uh, challenges of X-Plane 11A AI, uh, ATC, uh, will actually direct you to the right airport correctly. Uh, full, fully imp implementation of X-Plane 11's uh, PBR materials and 3D uh, grass effects has all been included as well, and is fully compatible with um, and blending with Ortho XP for the island as well. So uh, coming in at a pretty good price as well, uh, coming in at uh, 19 US dollars available now from the X-Plane.org store and from Sim Market available now. And finally, as we wrap up the Nova Wrap this week, I want to say thank you very much um, to everyone who sent messages of support to me um, during the week. So for those who are regular viewers, uh, you may have noticed that there was no episode last week, uh, and that was because... Um, before I had a chance to produce it, um, unfortunately I was out cycling and I was hit by a car. So I am very fortunate that um, I managed to get away mostly intact. Um, but of course it did throw me a lot and it has been very much a painful and very challenging week. Uh, so I do want to say thank you very much uh, to everyone for your messages of support. And I very much thank you for that and thank you me for that time. So... Um, just, just want to round out by saying, yeah, I, I just, it's, it's one of those things like we can all get frustrated when we see cyclists on the road, um, but just be careful. Don't, you know, don't do anything. Don't do something stupid like what this guy did. Um, he tried to overtake me, then cut me off, and I had nowhere to go. Uh, yeah, so I was normally when. Um, Normally when it's uh, car versus cyclist, the cyclist comes off very much worse for wear, and while I uh, definitely came off second best, I, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. So um, just just a message for everybody, please be careful, um, please be aware of cyclists, especially for many of my viewers in the Northern Hemisphere, it's coming into summer for you guys, so you will be seeing more cyclists out on the roads. Um, so please have patience. Yes, they. Yes, sometimes cyclists can be annoying, but have patience. They will have families and loved ones they want to get home to, and passions like flight simulation they want to get back to and enjoy as well. So, um, the whole point is everyone wants to get home alive. Um, so um, please be aware and um, stay safe out there on the roads for everybody. Uh, otherwise, I do want to let you know, guys know that there will be no Nova app next week. Uh, so next week, um, I am heading down to Port Macquarie. Um, hopefully, I will be going to be well enough and uh, healed up enough to, uh, to attempt at doing a half Ironman. Uh, so I'll be heading down there. If I'm not able to compete, then I'll at the very least be supporting many of my friends who are doing the event. So there will be no Nova app next week. So thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoy the break. And otherwise, folks, take care. Stay guys to all. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.